Good morning, everyone, and welcome to First Five. I'm Pastor Steve, and my goal today is to help you get your day off to a great start. And the way we do that on first on these first fives is by spending a little bit of time together, reading through, working through, studying through the Word of God, and by praying for one another. And so every morning I invite you to join me in reading one chapter of Scripture together. And then we take a slice of that, a portion of it, and we dig into it a little bit deeper and expound upon it and try to take some application from it. Well, most recently we've been working our way through Paul's letter to the Galatians, and today we come to the final chapter of the book of Galatians, chapter 6. These letters of Paul are relatively brief, particularly after we get through uh, Romans and Corinthians. Uh, and so uh, we're in the last chapter, so I hope when we're all done you'll read the whole of chapter 6. But for the purpose of our lesson, we're going to read just the very beginning of it. We'll look at verses 1 through 6. So, if you have a Bible handy, or you want to pull it up on your phone, I invite you to join me in Galatians chapter 6, beginning in verse 1. Brothers and sisters, if someone is caught in sin, you who live by the Spirit should restore that person gently. But watch yourself, or you also may be tempted. Carry each other's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. If anyone thinks that they are something when they are not, they deceive themselves. Each one should test their own actions. Then they can take pride in themselves alone without comparing themselves to someone else. For each one should carry their own load. Nevertheless, the one who receives instruction in the word should share all good things with their instructor. Now, this particular passage, this particular section is kind of rapid fire, actually, right? There's just line after line, sentence after sentence, there's a lesson and then a lesson and then another lesson. And they kind of come at us pretty quickly. So what I want to do today, a little bit different, is I, I just want to work through it verse by verse, right? And so we're just going to read through it again piece by piece and kind of dig into it a little bit. And so he starts out, brothers and sisters, if someone is caught in sin, you who live by the Spirit should restore that person with gentleness. And so he's reminding us that, look, we're all going to mess up sometimes. And when that happens, those of us who are Christ followers ought to be the ones who seek to restore that person, to help them to, to seek repentance and healing and be restored to the body of Christ. Sadly, I think one of the saddest things we see sometimes is in the Christian church, we can be judgmental or we can sort of cut people off who have failed in some way, who have sinned. I saw a quote years ago about the church being the only place where we shoot our wounded, right? I mean, one of the things Paul is saying to us is, you know what, if someone has failed, if they've struggled, it's up to us to help restore them, right? To love them back into the family of God, to allow them to repent and then to uh, reconnect them in relationship. Then he goes on and says, but watch yourself that you may also be tempted. And so he said, but be careful. When you are working with someone who has been drawn into some area of sin, it's important that we help them, restore them, but we don't want to be drawn into their sin. And so we have to be able to, to sort of have that defining line where where we can be in life with them, but not necessarily be drawn into the behavior that maybe led them into sin. And so he's cautioning us. Then he carries on. Actually, I'm quoting in a way. Right? He he continues in verse two where he says, "Carry each other's burdens, and in this way you fulfill the law of Christ." And so now he's saying, and. When you do this, you are now helping to carry another person's load, right? That we ought to share the weight, right? Like Jesus often used that image of, of oxen and a yoke, right? And how we pull together. And Christ said, my yoke is easy. When I'm, but we also 
we also are yoked to other believers and we pull the burden together. And so he's, he's reminding us that we need to be willing to help raise up other people's burdens. Then he gets into this section where he talks about pride, right? Not getting too uh, caught up in that. We should not deceive ourselves, think of ourselves more highly than we ought to. He says that kind of thing in a few places in his letters. And so reminding us to, even though we maybe didn't fall into that area of sin, even though we may be the person restoring someone else, we should not become prideful about that. <laughs> or else we ourselves will fall. Isn't that what the scriptures say? Pride comes before a fall, right? We, we become too too caught up in our own strength and think that we'd never fail, we'd never fall, and actually put ourselves in a, a worse position. And then he says, and do so without comparing themselves to someone else, right? So he reminds us of the risk of comparison, right? Sometimes I think we'll look at someone who has really messed up and we'll compare ourselves, right? We'll say, look, at least I'm not as bad as that guy over there, right? I mean, the Pharisees prayed that. They, they looked upon the sinner who was broken off in the distance, afraid to even look up to God. and wouldn't even look up to God. They were so broken in their sin. And they say, thank you, God, that I'm not like that sinner. And we do that sometimes, don't we? We compare ourselves to others to make us maybe feel better about our own sin. But Paul is saying, don't compare yourself. Each of us should just deal with our own stuff. Each one, he says in verse 5, should carry their own load. And then he said, nevertheless, he ends with this, the one who receives instruction in the word should share all good things with their instructor. And he's basically just saying, listen, you've got people who have trained you, who have taught you how to walk and how to live well in Christ. Uh, it's important that you care for them, right? That, uh, that, that you would um, pour back into their lives for what they have given to you. And so it's an interesting section, lots of good little tidbits and takeaways, but a lot of it's about how we restore others who are broken while yet remaining humble about our own areas of sin. Would you join me in prayer? Lord, this verse, this section reminds us that in truth we're all broken. We all have areas of failure, and so help us to not become prideful in that, nor should we be judgmental in that, Lord, but we ought to simply seek to restore one another because, Lord, there will be a day when we're the one who is in need of restoration. We'll all fail at times. We'll all struggle at times. And so help us to be like Christ. Help us to have grace and love for one another that seeks not to condemn, but to restore those who are lost and broken. I pray all this in Jesus' holy name. Amen. All right, everyone, have a wonderful weekend, and I will talk to you on Monday. God bless.